but the whole woke culture, I think, is truly awful. I don't know where it comes from. I don't know who's, who are the arbiters of these, this shaming. Right. And who, and who gave them the halos? Once upon a time, Hollywood told great stories. Movies were fun and Wall Street loved money. Then woke at the scene. Suddenly, even my grandmother's knitting patterns were branded as bigoted. Now we got Disney serving up morality monologues, Bud Light exchanging its king of the beer crown for an equity TR, Netflix promoting racism, gaming companies being deputized as the pronoun police, and cancel culture. Well, it continues hunting fame. The writing's on the wall. Woke is only a four-letter word for control that makes losers feel like winners, and their time is almost up. What's going on, everybody? Don't throw the baby out with a bathwater. That's an old saying that every Fortune 500 company should have taken to heart. Instead, you got corporation today's trading in likes instead of dollars. That's made their stocks plummet, and public support has vanished quicker than Rachel Ziegler's 15 minutes of fame. So it's time to count down to the top woke disasters of 2023 so far. Coming in at number five, Budweiser. Woke turns everything people love into poison. Hi. <sighs> One thing I will not tolerate people saying about me is that I don't like beer. Bud Light is trying to regain its spot as America's top selling beer after sales dropped 23% last month. Reportedly, the, the parent company losing $27 billion in market value thanks to its attempt to force trans Quack. ideology onto America's beer drinking men and women. No way. So I recently told my parents that I may be a little bit romantically interested in women. Oh, there's a big surprise. Let's rewind. Anheuser-Busch spent two decades marketing to frat boys, firefighters, and grit under their fingernail cowboys. It made sense. Budweiser was cheaper than therapy and made family reunions more entertaining after three beers. Yo, yo, pick up the phone. What's that? What's that? So what's up, B? Watching the game, having a bud. True. The million dollar ads worked. Bud Light, the CNN of beers, became the all-American king of such. That is, until one Ivy League feminist who majored in making demands to get credit for females for things they didn't do in history was hired. I'm a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. I had a really clear job to do when yeah. I took over Bud Light. And it was, this brand is in decline. It's been in decline for a really long time. And if we do not attract young drinkers to come and drink this brand, there will be no future for Bud Light. So I had this super clear mandate. It's like mm -hmm. we need to evolve and elevate this incredibly iconic brand. Meet Alyssa Heinerschein. She is the first VP female of marketing for Bud in 40 years. The executive thought she wanted to turn all their sinking sales around by hiring a former clown from The Price is Right and believe, yeah, that's going to do the trick. Dylan Mulvaney, come on down. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. On April 1st, after 20 years, one 20-second clip dropped Budweiser's team of Clydesdales in their tracks. Hi. Impressive carrying skills, right? I got some Bud Lights for us. It's a cause to celebrate. <laughs> this month, I celebrated my day 365 of womanhood, and Bud Light sent me possibly the best gift ever, a can with my face on it. People today would rather admit to enjoying a traffic jam for the alone time than change their brand of beer. But when it came to Bud Light, change they did. Modelo tops Bud Light, now the year's best-selling beer in the U.S. Bud spent 15 k to make a political statement. Anheuser-Busch, on the other hand, lost $27 billion. What a bargain. The Dylan Mulvaney disaster awoke a sleeping giant and proved once and for all, beyond any shadow of a doubt, that when you go woke, you go broke is a reality. And don't you forget it. Just like a hammer sees everything as a nail, woke views every friend as a potential enemy, treats every joke as a possible hate crime, and regards history as mere fan fiction need a revision. Let's meet contestant number four, Netflix, the fantasy series they promoted as a documentary, Cleopatra. What's strange about the docudrama is that they've decided to cast a black woman as Cleopatra. No. Mm -mm. I remember my grandmother saying to me, I don't care what they tell you in school, Cleopatra was black. 
There's no evidence that she was black. Cleopatra was 75% Greek and Middle Eastern. So In 2023, Netflix came out of the closet as the new brand ambassador for racism. The studio actually twisted history into a pretzel in order to erase the past, to control the present, and fill people's mind with their own agenda. And that's why they cast black English actress Adele James to play Queen Cleopatra. Every statue, every coin, every portrait depicted the last Ptolemy ruler of Egypt as an ancient Greek with an aquiline nose, an olive complexion, and all the classical Mediterranean features. It's still, the studio didn't just start making these mistakes on Cleopatra, not even close. Netflix kicked a hornet's nest a long time ago when they began prioritizing quantity of content over quality, when they placed ideology over historical facts and pleasing their Hollywood masters over giving them customers what they wanted. See, the streamers' plans didn't truly backfire until they wholeheartedly embraced the woke doctrine of presentism. Presentism, an attitude toward the past dominated by present-day attitudes and experiences. The appeal of Cleopatra is that we imagine her, that everyone can imagine her in their own way. I imagine her to have curly hair like me and a similar skin color. That's not how this works. Basically, all those that follow the cult of Muon Command found a way to make themselves feel better. They use their little magical soapbox time machine to judge everyone in the past viewed against how they imagined they would have acted if they lived way back in 1776 or even 51 BC when Cleopatra began her reign. We need to liberate our imaginations and boldly create a world in which we can explore our historical figures without fearing the complexity that comes with their depiction. I am proud to stand with Queen Cleopatra, a reimagined Cleopatra, and with the team that made this. Director Tina Garavi ignited a firestorm by blackwashing a legendary hero. It got so bad, Egypt sued. Greece became furious over having their history vandalized merely to satisfy a meltdown generation that treats every conversation like a TED Talk in search of a microaggression. It's not about black and white. It's about the continuous culture uh, appropriation and falsification of history that has been done by what the so-called Afrocentrist movement. But what made matters worse for Netflix was Cleopatra's producer, Jada Pinkett Smith, yeah, that one, joining forces with the director and doubling down on their ideology. And in the process, unmasking the truth behind it. Most of all, we need to realize that Cleopatra's story is less about her than it is about who we are. It was all a lie, and they knew it from the beginning. History didn't matter, facts didn't matter, only feelings did. Netflix lost what little was left of their reputation solely to push an agenda. Simply put, they bit off more than they can chew. Especially this last year, where um, uh, ideology is more important than art. Way more, certainly to the awards. Yeah, and it's just, you know, it, it, it's like, you know, ideology right. trumps art. And then, ideology right. trumps individual Terrible. effort. Ideology trumps good. Ideology trumps yeah, entertaining. There's two kinds of movies, virtue signalers yeah, uh -huh. and superhero movies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Once Hollywood called movies content, it was game over. Overnight, films became advertising vehicles for identity politics, corporate feminism, and rainbow pride. Let's meet contestant number three, the worst movie of the year, Disney's Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. How did you end up like this? That resourceful, daring, beautiful, self-sufficient line is pure cringe. Any talented director worth their salt inside of a decent production would always go to show rather than tell the audience who a character is. By the way, in case you don't know who that actress is, that's Phoebe Waller-Bridge. She won over the Hollywood hug by starring in a series called Fleabag, which less than 1% of the country ever watched. Yeah, you check me out, Chub Chub, because it's never going to happen. Oh, God, he can't believe how attractive I am. Kind of worried I'm going to make a sex offender out of the poor guy. Today, Phoebe is Tinseltown's favorite wannabe girl boss and franchise destroyer Kathleen Kennedy's very own self-insert. Plus, her number one choice for putting men in their place. I need to do this. Me too. Disney wasn't simply satisfied, just savaging Star Wars. No, sir. They pulled out the hammer and tongs to go medieval on Marvel and then later took it out on Willow. Once they were done there, they set their sights on humiliating Harrison Ford's legacy. They transformed the last crusader from a tomb raider into a museum tour guide on a coffee break who is crying that the creamer in his cup isn't lactose free. Thanks for putting up with me. <laughs> The message from the studio couldn't be any clear. She is in charge. Leave the heroics to the women, not the old white men. Me too. 
Indiana Jones on the dial of cucking Indiana Jones with yet another sexless co-star. Scripted to leave meant to transform a new generation of boys into broken beta male toys that were permanently stuck in the position of bend and blow. What's really tragic is that the first 15 minutes of the film were actually decent. You got classic Indy, the world's coolest archaeologist, the fedora-wearing adventurer with a sense of humor. Where's Lindsay? Then you fast forward into a train wreck and watch an old, decrepit, broken-down, depressed, cowardly sad sack. Think of Luke Skywalker in The Last Jedi. <laughs> That's the way Disney rolls. That is the way they deconstruct their legendary warriors with heart and hope and turn them into 21st century failures, basically transforming them into TikTokers who go on 24-7 marathon sessions to tell you about how to moisturize your feelings. Whatever I did, I apologize. The tragic kingdom treated its customers like suckers, casting an affirmative action hire to tell them how it is, but also to use that actors as a possible replacement for Indiana Jones if the movie hit pay dirt. No. I forced the card. I offer the mark, you, the feeling of a choice, but ultimately I make you pick the card I want. Fortunately for us, Dial of Destiny bombed. What's even sadder than that is that Kingdom of the Crystal Suck actually made more money than it. That's because audiences don't like being given lectures to by two-dimensional token actresses. See, Americans love strong women. And when we see them on the big screen, our eyes are glued to it as we go to the edge of our seat. Think about Raquel Welch or even Sigourney Weaver, Betty Davis. Or what about Carrie Fisher's Princess Leia? That's before she was turned into Mary Poppins or even Karen Allen's Marion Ravenwood in the original Raiders of the Lost Ark. Boy, you're something. Until I get back my $5,000, you're gonna get more than you bargained for. I'm your damn partner. Now she had everything that a woman should have inside of an adventure movie. She was tough, resilient, strong, feminine, vulnerable, sexy, smart, funny, and every bit Indies equal. Trust me. You know the piece I mean? You know where it is. <laughs> well, that's the way it was in those days. Today, Tinseltown views the culture war in such a manner that they need to complete the feminization of men in order to win. Because no real men, no true warriors to stand up to woke. The idea that you can control everything is that what they want to do is destroy everything that they don't agree with and start over in this imagined utopia that doesn't exist. And you know how well the imagined utopias work out. Just ask Chairman Mao or uh, <laughs> Comrade Stalin. Hollywood forgot what their role was in society to entertain people and give the customers what they wanted. Unfortunately, the gaming industry has followed suit. So meet contestant number two, Bethesda's new video game, Starfield. As long as the credits keep rolling in, life's good. They say all publicity is good publicity. Well, they were wrong. Recently, Bethesda's come under fire in the headline for Starfield's dialogue, storylines, and playability, which has about as many bugs as a motel mattress. Yet the Maryland company wasn't raked over the coals because how buggy it was that you had to play a character without a head most of the game. No, it's because Bethesda decided to include in their so-called interactive entertainment their own personal and private worship of Tinseltown's very own sacred cow, gender identity. And then, think we're good? And then, pronoun new character. All right, name character confirmed. In case you missed that, Starfield does not allow anyone, anyone to create a character without sharing their pronouns. As a result of that, you've had gamers live streaming their rage while demanding their refunds on Twitter. More than a few people found something was wrong with the game. One of them happened to be my friend Az over at Heels vs. Babyface. He instantly caught on to the forced indoctrination going on in the game. And then he went viral for speaking truth to power. Just think of all the planets I can visit, all the immersive things that I can get involved with, all the fights, all the relationships, all the people I meet, all the places I go. I'm so excited to go there. Sorry, did you want to get immersed in our world? Yeah, well, guess what? Fucking pronouns! Instead of offering pure pixels of escapism, you got gaming companies today using their digital domains to recruit malleable minds. See, they want to take again those brains and they want to pump them filled with what they view are the missing pieces to a proper mental outlook on life. 
I know I should have been more forthcoming about who I was earlier. I am a clone of a man. What did she say? The main problem with radicalization of any stripe, of any political persuasion, whether it's on the left, middle, or right, is that it strips all unique, rich voices of their individuality and creativity, turning human beings into bumper sticker slogans that breathe and go to the bathroom. In my opinion, that's what As is truly fighting against. You take everything we love, all our immersions, all our fantasies, all our escapism, and you just can't help shovel your dog crap ideology into everything he has a good point the court of public opinion isn't actually a court yet all the online mobs and journalists keep casting themselves as judge jury and executioner and, and the whole woke well we've talked mm. about this before mm. the whole woke culture i think is truly awful i don't know where it comes from i don't know mm. who's who are the arbiters of these this shaming right and it's very hard to pin them down and mm. it turns out it's usually a bunch of millennials you know? right and who, and who gave them the halos? Living in an echo chamber has its obvious downsides. All the Hannah Montana pajama babies have not only lost the plot completely, they've lost all common sense, and any sense of sympathy a few might have had for them has now turned to ridicule. What's really telling is when an actor has a laugh at their expense. Uh, this is a cast and a Danish production, which is entirely Nordic. It uh, therefore has some lack of diversity. You would say, as also new rules are implied what? in Hollywood. What are you going to? <laughs> yeah, sorry, but from it's, the get go. Uh, okay. Well, first of all, the uh, film <laughs> takes place in Denmark in the 1750s. Game, set, and match. But what really gets their blood pumping in the year of the rabbit for every virtue signal villain is to shut people up. Meet contestant number one, the winning woke disaster of 2023 so far. Cancel culture's latest trophies, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis. We are aware of the pain that has been caused by the character letters that we wrote on behalf of Danny Masterson. Another day, another hostage video by celebrities for apologizing about absolutely nothing at all. Celebrity married couple Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis from that 70s show fame bent the knee to the world and apologized for merely standing by a friend. A couple months ago, Danny's family reached out to us and they asked us to write character letters to represent the person that we knew for 25 years. That's it. That's all they did was send letters to a judge to honor a family's wish to help their son. Mind you, these letters weren't intended to try to prove a man's innocence, but to request leniency and reduce his days in jail. Honorable Judge Olmedo, I met Danny Masterson when I was 20 years old in 1998. He instantly became a friend, dedicated co-worker, and role model to me. While I'm aware that the judgment has been cast as guilty, I hope that my testament to his character is taken into consideration in sentencing. I do not believe he is an ongoing harm to society. Now, Mila's letters pretty much sound the same. They have the same supportive essence. Unfortunately, they've all been lost in the ruckus created by cancel culture's latest safari. The letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial system or the validity of the jury's ruling. They were intended for the judge to read. And we see one more time that what was intended to be private has now been made public. Those letters were solely intended for the judge. Yet woke mobs found a way again to violate every custom, every norm, etiquette, and law just to uphold their beliefs. On September 7th of 2023, Danny Masterson was sentenced to 32 years to life for violating two women two decades ago. Now, I'm not relitigating the case here. I wasn't in court. I haven't seen the evidence. But what I'm talking about and spotlighting is that Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis bent the knee and now are being hunted like big game. We support victims. We have done this historically through our work and will continue to do so in the future. Watching that video for me is painful. Anytime someone bends the knee to the mob and degrades themselves, that is woke sending a message that no one is safe. No one. It doesn't matter if you're rich or you're poor, wealthy or famous. They're coming after you. And that's not how I play. See, what they're telling everyone is you're going to join the minority cult with a large megaphone. Are you going to be cast adrift till you feel absolutely alone? We have found the witch. May we burn her? Burn her! Who do you know she is a witch? Now, I got to tell you, my friends, most of you know my story. I was kidnapped at the age of seven. I was alone in that basement. And I faced down my fear. I defeated my giant. And if I could do it at that age, you can do it now. Woke is just a fad, a dangerous one, 
yet it's disappearing quickly. Don't allow anyone to make you feel like you're isolated on an island in the middle of nowhere all alone. When you feel that way, look inside, dig deep. You will find the strength to keep going forward. At my signal, unleash hell. Now, 2023 is four months away from turning the page. If you enjoyed the video and found value in it and want to be ready for the next surprise release, all you got to do is hit the subscribe button. And to win every battle ahead from now on, all you have to do is remember that we never bow down, we never bend the knee. Always forward.